Chip. And this is Contentment Channel. We are a middle-aged couple doing the off-grid thing in the Intermountain West and loving it. All the... Go ahead. I've decided I don't like the term middle age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me either. But that's who we are. We can't deny it. My gray hair is getting to me. Not middle age. But anyway, I digress. Diverse. <laughs> I digest. <laughs> this is our belated uh, September 2020 update to let you know what's going on out here on the homestead. <laughs> and uh, it's been a it's been a very interesting at times very challenging uh, month. It's been it's been a very challenging several months. Uh, you know, with the things we've been fighting in order to get things done here, but. Um, We've, we've had a few mishaps, and uh, we've had a little fun, and, you know, we've had some bright spots in it, but, uh, well, let's, let's just get right into it. What should we talk about first? Well, we still don't have Dinah totally 100% running, but we are working on that. The problem is, this guy about killed himself with it. <laughs> Well, I mean, we've had Dynaho running. She's not totally dialed in, and we keep, you know, tinkering with her to get it that way because we have to work, you know, we have a hilly uh, piece of acreage here. We've got to be able to get down the hill with Dinah, and I want to make sure that before we go down the hill with Dinah that we can get her back up. For those of you who are familiar with, you know, our continuing saga regarding Dinah, uh, we actually have two old Dynahos dating from the early 1960s, but it's taken, it's been a little bit of a struggle. Some of that struggle has to do with our remote location and being able to get parts out here to us and waiting on things. Some of it's just trouble with, uh, you know, working on an old machine like that itself and getting it dialed in. These uh, uh, flathead Continental engines are good engines once you get them tuned in. Uh, correctly, but it's the tuning them in that uh, has presented a struggle for us. It runs, it does its thing, but just not 100% like we need it to if we're going to take it down that hill and be sure that we can get it, that it can get itself back up the hill. And then, as Robert said, he rolled it. <laughs> well, what else can you say? He turned the daggum thing over on its side. Well, we had a mishap and a bit of a close call. I was coming downhill and trying to dump on the other side of the edge of that hill. Well, I came up here with my tire and it set off the center of balance just too much and tipped Dyna over. So there she sits. And uh, my guess is she'll probably be okay as soon as we set her right. I was really annoyed, perturbed, upset because he could have died out there. She wasn't worried about me. She was just worried about the fact that I could die and leave her out here alone. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, 911. I don't know. I don't know how to tell you to get here, but there's a man dead out on the backhoe. <laughs> Underneath the backhoe, as I began to pile up dirt along the edge of the hillside, the hill began to tilt down and to the left a little bit. And then I made the dumb mistake, which you should never do, of driving that thing down the hill with the bucket fully up with dirt in it. And it set off the center of balance when the right wheel hit the adjacent pile that I had just left. It tilted the back up, up just about a foot on the right wheel, right front wheel. And when it did, that was just enough to compromise the center of balance, and it threw it over. Thankfully, and by the way, it happened much faster than I imagined a 13,000-pound backhoe could flip. Um, 
I barely had time to stand up out of the seat before I was thrown to the ground. And the, as I was falling, the thing I was thinking is this thing is coming over on top of me and I'm dead. But it didn't because because the, the front... Uh, loader bucket was up all the way when it fell it sort of stopped it you know it hit the ground sideways and stopped it and also the the backhoe boom on the back was tilting to the left which contributed to this so it also kept it from rolling any further one heavy wrecker and a whole chunk of money later in about 20 minutes uh, the thing was right back up on its feet Thanks to the wrecker, able to make quick work of getting it off of there. See the slope? <laughs> Gotta go get the seat over there. Doesn't look like a lot of damage, it just fell over. But uh, I gotta go through it. Time for an oil change anyway, and uh, all that good stuff. So go through it and make sure it's okay. And all it needed was an oil change, otherwise, the thing's just fine. No damage at all to the machine. The next item up for bid, and the price is right. <laughs> is potato harvest. Egypt got to work his first potato harvest. So the potato harvest was something that was, you know, I was curious about just to see uh, what it was like. I just wanted it really for the experience. Um, it's one thing that happens in this valley every year that sort of, you know, people in the community get together and help these farmers bring in their harvest. You know, I was interested in how they do it, the machines they use, and, you know, the processes involved. And it was very interesting. It was a lot of fun. I got to meet some people. I got to practice my Spanish uh, with some of the migrant workers that were there. Um, it was it was kind of fun. They were long days. Uh, we'd start, you know, right about sunup and end right about sundown. And you're outside uh, in all kinds of weather. <clears throat> and basically sorting through potatoes. I got to meet some people here in the valley, some very nice people that I think, I hope, will become good friends. So maybe they'll call me back to drive a tractor or something. I pulled up all of my potatoes out of the cold frame. I dug up my potatoes. I forgot to record it because I always forget to get the camera and record. Um, but I just bought some potatoes from the store that had already sprouted eyes and planted them. I didn't plant them early enough, um, but I did grow some potatoes. Yeah, that's a good looking potato right there. <laughs> I got dibs on this one. We have a freeze coming up in two days, so I had to go ahead and kill these things off and everything. That's what they do. The That's what the commercial producers do. They put a desiccant or something, I guess it would be called on the potato vines to dry them out so they can get them harvested before the weather gets terrible. I don't know what I'm gonna do with those onions. I keep watering this, but- It's not really going anywhere, is well, it? Well, no, they got a lot bigger because they all started out, when I replanted them, they all started out smaller than this, real skinny. Yeah, but your peppers are done. Yeah, they never those never did anything, so I just said I don't think it. they got enough water. No, but that was an interesting kind of lesson about growing things here in this climate. Mm -hmm. But they do spray the plants and the ground and the potatoes and things like that with these special inhibitors that keep them from growing while they're in storage, uh, even while they're in the ground before they're harvested. And so uh, if you want to grow potatoes, um, buy organic potatoes and use those as your seeds. Every once in a while there is a plant that will only grow one tuber or maybe two or three tubers and those become enormous and those two the, those potatoes are so big that they're not marketable and they literally throw them away there was a lot of waste uh during the uh during the potato harvest with all of these gigantic potatoes which are perfectly good to eat but which a, a farmer cannot sell we have some funky ones you should uh -huh. go get them go okay. show them I'll a show funky them. one and put that dumb dog out because she's about to go <laughs> Come on, Reeves. Come on, Reeves.
Yeah. Here are some of the, there, there's one that's kind of rotten. Here are some of the ones that he was able to snatch from yeah. the trash pile. You can tell, you can see that they're, <laughs> trash <pile>. well, <laughs> you can see they're really misshapen and not very appealing. Yeah, these are red potatoes. And of course, you know, when you think of a red potato, you think of a nice thin skin, nice pretty, uh, you know, red or pinkish color. And, uh, you know, you don't think about all these extra extensions on them. They're usually just a, a nice, smooth, you know, what we think of as an in-store potato size. But you'd be surprised how many potatoes come out of the ground that look like this. I don't have one here, but the most common uh, funny shape that a potato comes in is a heart shape. And then these are, a, you know, like a variety of russet. Same thing. They've got these little extensions on them, which are just fine to eat. Um, but... Uh, you know, there they are. And we've left the dirt on them because leaving the dirt on them keeps them nicer for a little longer. They do feed some of the potatoes to the, their cows. They mm -hmm. they have a cattle uh, ranch as well. Mm -hmm. And so some of these kinds of potatoes they take to the cows. Mm -hmm. uh, I could not get carrots to sprout. I did get about six to grow, and they were only about this big. Uh, the onions kind of grew, but I... Mm -hmm. When I separated them and, and spaced them out, they got to be about that tall with a little bitty, you know, wide end. I don't know what that's called. It's not a bulb because they were um, not bulb onions. Um, but the greens, the lettuces that we planted, those really did quite well. Um, I tried broccoli. It never did sprout. I tried some cauliflower. It didn't sprout. Um, a lot of stuff just didn't sprout. I think what I've learned... <clears throat> with the potato farmers and just talking to the farmers out here. <clears throat> Even the organic stuff that they grow, they need to fertilize. They have their giant commercial services that come out here for organic growers that literally have a big bunch of compost that's in a gigantic uh, tub that's trailer mounted. They put water in there and then they stir it up to create a tea and then they spray it out on the crops. So that's how they fertilize the organic stuff. Probably we ought to consider something like that. Mm -hmm. Probably get better yields. Around the day of the storm that we had here, like September 4th or 8th or somewhere around in there, that was like the first winter storm that he showed you in a video with these crazy winds. Unfortunately, I did not get a video of that, which looking back, I should have. Um, you were too busy trying to save Buzz. Well, I, it, you know, uh, we've heard about the winds, but this, these were sustained winds. So I drove to a little community and back, and oh my goodness, you probably I probably could only why did you drive to the community to get oh to get new straps, and I probably could see maybe ten feet in front of me as I was driving. The town closest to us, a um, bunch of, a bunch of trees blew down at the in the town, the biggest town here. They had over twelve inches of snow in town on one. A day and a half. Roscoe and Reba were kind of sick that day and I brought them in. I let them come in and stay in the house because it was just so windy. And their house, you know, the protections around their house blew away. And we put hay around their, their dog house and I put a really super heavy box on top of it. The wind blew the box over, blew it away, and blew all the hay off of it. So I they couldn't stay outside because there was no place for them to get out of the wind. So they were in here and they just were kind of lethargic and stuff and they weren't doing so well. And then they, then they got sick. You feeling okay, Roscoe? Hmm? What'd you get into that made you sick? Hmm? What'd you get into? <laughs> You're sick too. You did whatever brother did, didn't you? Got sick. Reba was only sick for like a day, but Roscoe, he was sick for over a week, and he just got skinnier and skinnier. I had to take him to the doctor, and they gave him some antibiotics, and he's back to normal now. Um, who knows what they eat out here. Um, They're he forever killed, dragging something up. And Roscoe killed a rabbit. I'm surprised that he was able to catch it. So the dogs are forever dragging up bones mm -hmm. or 
something from around here. Eating, Who knows what they ate? And eating rabbit poo, poo, elk poo, moo, uh, sheep, mule poo. Yeah. Cow poo, I mean, it's all of it. So who knows what he got into and made him sick. Yeah, so keep that in mind. Keep deworming medicine handy and give it to him often if you have dogs out in the countryside. Oh, but going back to the windstorm, oh. and we have a video out on that, destroyed brand new turbine that we installed on Buzz. Look at that. Yeah. Um, the wind was just too much for it. it the wind literally lifted the wind turbine up off of the top of the mast where it sat there at sort of at an angle and could not, you know, move in the wind uh, to mitigate the forces of the wind. It just stuck in one position. The wind bent the tail on the turbine and probably tore up the uh, generator on it. We haven't had an opportunity to test it yet, put it back, uh, but it's not going. The other thing it did is because it was stuck in one spot and couldn't move or mitigate itself in the wind, the force of the wind kept working back and forth on the mast until one of the welds broke that was holding the mast. That's why she had to go get the straps. It was ugly. I was doing harvest, and uh, she was telling me about the wind. There was nothing. There was no wind over there on the other side of the valley at all. And um, I come back here, and I see the damage. It's like it was, brand new wind turbine. It was pretty brutal. So. Uh, somebody over to the east of us, his trailer blew over, blew off of the jack stands and everything, and he was... Now he had a mobile home, right? Or uh, was it a travel trailer? I think it was a travel, travel trailer. trailer. My, my pockets of my shirt jack were full of sand, and I mean, literally full. You, and yeah. my hair was full of sand. It was just brutal. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we... We have got to find ways to mitigate uh, this wind out here because the reason we're in today doing this is because it's a sunny day outside, but the winds are blowing at probably 20 miles per hour. And it makes it really hard to run the backhoe and things like that when you're getting a face full of sand all the time. Anything we have that, that sits outside when the wind picks up, you might as well just count on being filled with sand or gone. Mm -hmm. We had that green kiddie pool mm -hmm. that for that for a while we used as our bathtub here until the house was finished and stuff like that. And the dogs used it for their wading pool. And stuff. It's gone. We can't find it. I mean, it's gone. It's just e gone. Everything. Everything. Everything blew over. Tables blew over out there. I mean, just buckets blew over. Mm -hmm. Just everything. We had a um, sink. Mm -hmm. A stainless steel sink that we bought at a yard sale that was underneath the travel trailer out there. Um, and when I walked out there, I saw the sink was no longer under the travel trailer. It was, you know, six feet outside the travel trailer, flipped over on a gigantic sand dune that had been created. <laughs> so, so. Oh, yeah, it was, it was nuts. I mean, you know, of course, building enclosures and things like that stuff to store things in to keep it out of the wind and dust and things like that are, are no-brainer but we're not ready to do those things yet until we uh, get other things in place like a septic system which we hope uh, we will have done here pretty quickly so and that brings us the dumpy yes um, dumpy tell them who tell them who dumpy is dumpy is the dump truck it has a, a back rear a rear brake problem a leaking hydraulic Thing or something like that and we didn't know how to get the axle off and I went on to a forum for Ford vehicles the people on the forum were very nice and they gave us a lot of great suggestions and we were finally able to pull the axles out we're gonna make a mark right here so that I know that the axle is gonna go back the same way it came out mounted to each one of these studs is a little cone washer I can't see that and it you know it slips on but it's a very snug fit they are what was preventing the axle from coming out and there it is very nice now inside of here is a three inch nut a set of bearings and I think another like a thrust washer or something like that they all need to come out okay so I got one of these spindle nuts 
uh, in order to fit over this nut in here and I found out it's already loose I could just loosen it like that with my hand next a thrust washer all right thrust washer looks like another nut that I can just spin off with my hand it looks like and the bearings wow those bearings are awfully clean what does that mean there's no grease on them oh <laughs> <laughs> wow cleanest set of bearings I think I've ever pulled out of anything this thing is heavy I'm sure very heavy Good thing I got sand here. Fall. Oh, it's all scratchily. Yeah, it breaks. Oh. oh, 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 are you okay? I'm fine. Oh my gosh, there's spider webs in the brakes. Oh, well. That wheel cylinder is leaking, and it looks like that one is too. Look at that. That's what's left of that grease is just oil now. <laughs> the uh, bearings are absolutely shot, the wheel bearings. So those need to be replaced. I mean, I pulled them out and they just sort of wiggled. And uh, so they're they're gone. Seals are increasingly hard to find uh, for those, but we found them. the The drums are too uh, they're they're too worn out to reuse. So it looks like we'll have to find replacement drums for them. So that's a bit of a job. That's more of a job than I thought brakes would be on that dump truck. Um, and I've never done I've never worked on brakes on a on a heavy duty vehicle like that before. It's quite involved. But, uh, and of course, being busy with potato harvest, no time to work on it. So hopefully here pretty quickly, we'll get all that done and wrapped up so that we can take that truck safely into the mountains and gather firewood and, you know, things like that. And I guess that's pretty much it, except for one more thing. You've seen me drinking this. In our last update video that we shot inside the trailer, I mentioned that my brother, you know, helped us, uh, with a, a little, with some funds to help buy that trailer. It was very kind of him, and thank you. Um, my other brother saw that video, and I guess not to be outdone, <laughs> he heard me say in that video, I was having my one beer that I get per week, and uh, he, he heard me say in the video that, uh, you know, it, it's hard to find good beer in this area. And so he got a hold of me and sent me some beer. And I don't want to show the brand name because they're not paying me. <laughs> so, um, but uh, you know who you are, brother. Thank you so much. And uh, this is very welcome. Like I said, I only get one beer a week because I can't have more than that. But when I have a beer, I'd rather have one that I really like rather than something that tastes like Alka Seltzer. <laughs> so, um, thank you again. I appreciate it, brother. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope everyone out there is doing okay in this. COVID, love in the time of coronavirus and everything. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks a lot. We appreciate your viewership. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and please leave a comment that helps us with YouTube. Um, we're a small channel. We always like to grow, not because we want anything out of it. We don't monetize, but because we just enjoy interacting with you and making friends. And we have made some good friends, uh, I think, um, uh, with YouTube. We made some good acquaintances, some good friends, and folks that, you know, we call uh, their go-to people for certain things, and we just enjoy having an interaction with them. So we enjoy interacting with you. Please leave a comment, a like, a share, even if you don't like it. Tell us that, and um, that'll help us make these videos better. But until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Take care. Give me a kiss. Uh -huh.